Steelix, uh, of course, rocking the Falco. We saw him already. He has an explosive combo game. Noklu feels a little bit more of a consistent player, you know? Like, he will do consistent damage. He will ledge trap you. He hails from Diddy back in Smash 4. And his Pokemon trainer does have some of those elements. Ooh, and that's one thing that this character does. I love that upbeat from Squirtle. Uh, I think it's a really underrated move. The hitbox on it is not where you think it is. The hitbox is huge, and it just beats out way more moves than you'd think. I know some people actually find it incredibly triggering. Um, nonetheless, though, he's been staying Squirtle for a while. Celix gets his first combo in, already doing 54%. He might see the switch from Squirtle soon, though. Yep, and there it is, especially once he already has him at the ledge. I love the drop back. So many people get caught by that uh, up smash. Oh, uh, sorry, the F smash at the ledge from Noku. That, I think we might call that the Noku. Oh, he survives that back air. And if he, and he gets off the ledge, this is huge for him. Can he be able to actually get a stock, though? Charizard is a big boy, and off stage, he's not going to be surviving that forward air. Huge lead for Steelix. Noku actually opting to stay Squirtle for now. I think he knows he's a small target, and he actually kills with him. Kills with an up air, nonetheless. It has been a long time since I've seen Squirtle up air kill. And now he doesn't have to worry about cycling through the Pokemon. He starts the next stock with Squirtle, and he can already get all this crazy damage started. As we're seeing, 39%, and he's still being juggled. <gasps> Once again, I love that up B. It just covers way more space than you'd think. At the ledge, putting him off stage. Now, I will say, I guess partially because you Squirtle and Pokemon Trainer in general, you know, I mean, Ivysaur can do back, back, uh, down throw stuff. But for the most part, can't do crazy things off stage. Obviously, there is that, but I mean, like, going deep off stage to, like, challenge Steelix when he's, you know, going for a Firebird, like, way down there. Charizard might be the exception to that. Oh, yeah. All right. So he was looking, was trying to scout out that low recovery. Steelix, though, very intelligently goes high. And he saves his jump. Beautiful stuff. I'm surprised that the back end of that up tilt didn't connect on a big boy like Charizard. But Noku now at 120%. He switches to Squirtle, but being stuck at Squirtle at this point is really scary. He is a smaller target, though. As we see right there, the up smash just completely whiffs, and it gives him the opportunity to switch to Ivysaur. A little bit more weight and a little bit more kill potential. Oh, such a brilliant air dodge. Doesn't end up getting himself down aired, which is definitely what Noku was looking for. And he gets the up tilt to up air. Falco's jump, as you see, just the amount of vertical distance he covers is absurd. I love the stall. I love the angle from that. But now he gets down thrown. This could be huge. Read that spot dodge. Maybe Noku's getting scared. If he starts getting scared, throwing out those defensive options, that's when we see Steelix's combos. Oh, that should be it, though. Yeah, okay. And Noku actually gives a little bit of a, like, relief head, head thrash. Just like, whew. He definitely knew the danger he was in. It shows that he respects his opponent. He knows that Steelix's combo game. He, we've seen him do plenty of zero to deaths across all sorts of characters against all sorts of players. So, uh, and he's leaving. All right, it seems like we're actually going to be getting a substitute uh, for game two. Steelix is hopping out, and I think Potato is stepping in. Bobo, who's who's uh, who's going to play game two for Steelix? All right, actually looks like Steelix is going to play game two for Steelix. No relay race this time around. All right. Obstacle Smash Ball, I think that's perfectly fine. Falco's combo game, when the platform is just in the middle right there, ends up being very consistent. And smaller blast zones on the side mean back air will be killing earlier. Although, for the most part, he was killing off of the top. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Now, the last game, for two stocks at least, we saw... Squirtle was the uh, was the lead, and he would hit him once, and he would do a ton of damage. Yep, that downer is probably where things get started. He actually had time to act, and he opted for shield, which at low percents against Squirtle, shield is not the defensive option. 
Like, just plain and simple. He wants the grab. He wants to be doing all that sort of stuff. Oh, great read right there. Ah, but he doesn't respect. That's the thing. People don't uh, up B from Squirtle. An underrated move. It can do some silly things. Ooh, but speaking of silly things. Steelix doing what Steelix do right now. <gasps> oh, no. What happened? He was dead. He actually couldn't have recovered from that. And he saved him and died in the process. That was... Uh, a bit of an unfortunate choice from Steelix. What are you doing? You're crazy. And he saves him again. Uh. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> a bit of a call out. Maybe that'll give him some momentum considering the fact that he just double SD'd, basically. I don't know what he was trying to go for. He just a little bit too hungry. Wow, why not call out with the Uppy? That's actually, like, think about how risky that is. Even though Uppy might not be the... I mean, it's pretty dang punishable. And honestly, Falco just needs, like, one grab, one up tilt at those lower percents to do, like, 60%. But Noku just confident right now, it feels like, where in, in locking down where Steelix is going to be. And I think that that's, honestly, an apt assessment. 129% and Noku is only at 68 and he has another stock to work with whereas Steelix has zero. <sighs> Some questionable plays from Steelix, especially in that game too. But uh